Getting up at night to pee multiple times is arguably one of the most annoying symptoms that men experience as they progress through life, have enlargement of their prostate and get urinary symptoms related to this. In my experience as the director of the prostate clinic and a urologist over the last two decades, there are a variety of symptoms that really cause men a great deal of bother with regards a growing prostate. But without doubt, getting up multiple times or even rushing to the toilet in the day is the most annoying aspect that they experience. In this video, I wanted to go through with you some of the medical options, in particular, 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, a class of drug that can shrink the prostate, help alleviate some of your urinary symptoms, and answer some of the questions that you may have if your urologist has recommended that you try one of these agents. As always, please, if you get benefit from the video, think about subscribing, put on the notifications bell, and like this video. If you do have comments, questions, or things you'd like to share, please leave them in the comment section down below. So to begin with, what is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor? Well, if I take a step back, if we look at the male hormone, it's called testosterone. Testosterone is one of the main androgens that we see. And at the level of the prostate, testosterone is converted to its active form, which is DHT or dihydrotestosterone. And the enzyme that does that is 5-alpha reductase. So a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, a 5-ARI, is a drug that men can take that really prevents the conversion of testosterone into its active form or its active metabolite, DHT. Inside the prostate, there are different areas or different zones, and it is the central part, which is called the transition zone. That's the zone that surrounds the urethra or the outlet pipe of the bladder. As we progress through life, the cells in that area undergo a process called hyperplasia, Hyperplasia is a process whereby, in essence, those cells multiply and we end up with more cells the older we get. And those cells, needless to say, because they are more of them, occupy more space and the volume of the prostate increases. It's this increase in volume of the prostate that causes compression of the urethra, compression of the outlet pipe, and that in turn results in urinary symptoms that, broadly speaking, can be classified into obstructive symptoms, slow flow, hesitancy, you feel like you need to pee, you get to the toilet, but still it takes a while before you initiate a stream. And sometimes men feel as if they haven't really emptied completely even after they've done a pee. So those symptoms are related to the obstruction. This, the the follow-on effect are bladder symptoms. And the bladder, in essence, is a big muscular bag. It needs to work harder. It needs to squeeze with more force to drive urine beyond the prostate. And when it does that regularly, every pee for years, if not decades, the bladder wall becomes more muscular. And as a result, it's stiffer, it's less elastic. And then we end up with storage-related symptoms. And these include rushing to the toilet, going more frequently, or getting up at night. Okay, that's a little bit of an overview of BPH, but the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor is there to try to reverse this process. There are a couple of commonly used 5-ARIs that are in circulation, certainly in Australia and in uh, Europe and the States. These drugs are either finasteride, which was the original 5-ARI, and the trade name for finasteride is something called Proscar. A newer 5-ARI is called Dutasteride, and the trade name for that is Avidat. Both of these drugs are pretty similar in their effectiveness. They're the same in their mode of action in that they reduce the conversion of testosterone through to dihydrotestosterone or DHT. So who is suitable for these drugs? Well, in essence, men who have got urinary issues that are significant and cause them bother 
and they wish to try medical therapy to try and improve the way that they pee. Now, there is a subset of individuals who do have urinary issues that are going to be best served with this medication. And in essence, from a prostate characteristic point of view, basically, the bigger, the more obstructive prostates, the greater the residual volume, the better off men are to have a 5-ARI as part of their treatment. Now, there was a study done many, many years ago. The original study, it was called MTOPS, or the Medical Therapy of Prostate Symptoms. And it looked at treating men either with an alpha blocker, and an alpha blocker tends to be the first port of call when we're managing urinary issues related to a big prostate. Alpha blockers basically are smooth muscle relaxants. They relax the muscle in the pipe, in the prostate, the prostatic urethra, and as a result, they make it easier for men to pee. These five ARIs, when they were studied in the MTOPS trial, it was noted that men who had larger prostates, men who were older than 65, men who had a PSA above 1.4, and men who had a prostate volume above 40 cc's, this cohort of individual did far better longer term if they had combination therapy with an alpha blocker and also a 5-ARI. Now, that original study looked at finasteride as the 5-ARI. Now, in Australia, and I can't pass comment if this product is available in the States or in Europe, but in Australia, there is a tablet that combines both a an alpha blocker as well as a 5-ARI in one tablet. Here it is on the PBS, so it is the cost of a script, which is around seven or eight dollars, and it um, is cheaper than many other alpha blockers. And so it becomes very popular in the primary healthcare setting for men to be prescribed this combination tablet as their first port of call. Now, what happens if men take a 5 ARI? Well, what we can expect is some shrinkage of the prostate. And this is really why it's more suited for men that have got larger prostates. And on average, we can see about a 20 to 30% reduction in the size of someone's prostate if they take a 5 ARI for six months or more. It's important to be aware that when men take 5 ARIs for a longer period of time, there are effects on a man's PSA test as well. And so if a man has been on a 5 ARI for six months or more, his PSA will be or should be 50% reduced compared to what it was prior to treatment. Now, this is a really important factor if men go on this class of drug, because to get someone's true PSA, you then need to double their blood test value, and that gives you their real PSA when accounting for 5-ARI use. And that's a factor that may not be that commonly known, certainly in certain medical circles, but also in the general public. So if you are taking a 5-ARI, please, when you touch base, either with your local doctor or with your urologist, note whatever your blood test PSA is, and then double it to get your true value. Now, this is obviously really important because if you are undergoing PSA testing, any potential increase in a PSA becomes far more significant when men are taking a 5 ARI. And that's important to be aware of when you're deciding if someone needs then to be assessed for their risk of prostate cancer. Now, in the early MTOP study, there was some speculation or some uh, a theory that perhaps taking a 5 ARI increased the risk that someone could be diagnosed with a prostate cancer. Now, subsequent review of this data and later data really has shown that there is no increased risk of developing an intermediate or a high-grade prostate cancer with the use of a 5-ARI. And it's important to be aware also that this data is in the pre-MRI era. 
And many of my patients who do have symptomatic BPH that qualify really for uh, combination therapy will have a marginally elevated PSA prior to treatment. And that man will be evaluated with an MRI scan before he starts therapy. That original study, the MTOPS trial, demonstrated that if men took combination therapy, the alpha blocker and the 5-ARI, they were far less likely to progress in terms of their urinary symptoms. They were less likely to go into urinary retention. And the relative reduction, the relative reduction in the probability of going into retention was around 50%. However, the absolute reduction and this is where it's really important, approximately seven out of every 100 men who have symptomatic BPH will go into urinary retention on an annual basis. And that means they have an acute episode where they're unable to pee and that man needs to get to hospital as soon as possible and to have a catheter placed into his bladder to decompress the retention. So seven out of 100 men with symptomatic BPH can go into retention every year. If you go on a 5-ARI, that can be reduced by 50%. So it reduces it from around 7 per 100 to 3 in 100. So the absolute numbers appear less impressive when you compare them to the relative risk reduction. Important to be aware of, absolute risk reduction versus relative risk reduction. Okay, so what are the downsides to 5-ARIs? Well, it's really important to be aware that 5-ARIs can be associated with sexual function changes. So they can reduce a man's libido. So his sex drive can be reduced by taking this drug. The other thing that can be influenced is his erections. And it's possible that the uh, rigidity of a man's erection and the durability of a man's erection can be negatively affected by taking a 5-ARI. It's also possible some men can notice some slight mood changes related to this medication, although this tends to be quite rare. And so these factors, as I'm sure you can discern, are related to changes in the active level of testosterone. In my practice, because of these sexual uh, side effects, I do not prescribe this drug to younger men, and I tend to reserve this for older men. You choose where you put that line, older versus younger, but crudely speaking, men that are over the age of 70, if they are not sexually active or have no desire to be sexually active, then in my opinion, those men, if they have symptomatic uh, lower urinary tract issues related to an enlarged prostate, they are the ideal candidate for having a 5-ARI as part of their medical therapy. That's obviously assuming that that man does not wish to proceed on with alternative treatments such as minimally invasive treatments like Urolift Resume or Itind, or alternatively having definitive therapy such as a green light laser prostatectomy. So when you're having these discussions with your treating urologist, it's really important to be aware of the balance between what it is that you're hoping to achieve with medical therapy and to be aware of the potential side effects that you can experience when you take these drugs. We digress from the video from a second, but if you'd like to be part of our growing community, please follow the link in the comment section down below and sign up to our free newsletter that comes out on a weekly basis, keeping you up to date with all aspects related to prostate health and various treatments that are available uh, for men. Now back to the video. Okay, to sum up, who should take a 5-ARI? Well, if you have a prostate volume over 40 cc's, if your PSA is above 1.4, if your residual volume, the amount you leave behind after you pee, is over 100 mils, as determined by a, uh, a renal tract ultrasound, if you are over the age of 70 and you're not sexually active or have no desire to be sexually active, and you do not wish to have treatment, i.e. definitive treatment, then a 5-ARI may be suitable for you. 
please bear in mind the changes in your PSA, i.e. a 50% reduction if you take the drug for six months or more. As always, if you have questions or comments, please leave them in the section down below. If you'd like to know more about prostate issues, please have a look at this video or perhaps have a look at this video here. As always, take care of your prostate. Until the next video.